Hello and welcome to this short presentation on fabricating a clear stent for the rapid and precise placement of composite restorations. My name is Ian Buckle and I'd like to share with you one of the most common things that I see in my practice which is dealing with worn teeth and how we can provide an economical rapid and precise result that either can be seen as a temporary measure, semi-permanent or in some cases even a permanent solution. So if we take a patient like Elwin and his main concern is that he wants to keep his teeth for the rest of his life, they keep chipping and breaking because of the wear that he's experienced and he's actually had a vertical fracture on the upper right first premolar um, and he's lost that tooth. He wants to improve the appearance of his teeth but he wants to still look like, like him. So as you can see from these photographs, um, he's got quite severe wear on his teeth and really it's a question of how we're going to put these back together to fulfill his aesthetic requirements but also to give him some good function and make sure that everything's in place so we could place uh, an implant or a bridge where he's lost his tooth in the premolar region. The key to success in all these situations of course is to make a thorough examination diagnosis and then to develop a treatment plan and once we've done that then we're going to make a, a wax up so that we have the design already before we take this to the meth. Many of you will be familiar with using uh, incisal stents to place composites. You can then place them using uh, a simple hybrid composite or using a stratified composite technique. What we're going to show you here today is how to make a stent so that using some of the materials, either warm composite or even some of the new flowables that we have available today, that you can restore several teeth at a time and make this a a rapid, precise and economic process for both you and your patient. The first thing we're going to do is a lot of these materials that we're going to use for taking the impression are quite rigid in themselves. I always used to like a tray to support that and some companies make these nice clear impression trays that will work very well. We're lucky we have a, a mini star machine and we can we can make our own clear special trays using that Biostar material. Usually use, use a two millimeter blank for that. And you can also get this triad trans sheet, which is a clear acrylic material, uh, which you're going to see later, which can make a nice clear tray to support the impression material. The clear impression materials out there, I'm sure there's lots of products available. These are some that I know. We've got the Crystal Affinity. I think it's available through Optident. It's a very nice material, Memosil. And also the RSVP system, which is available in the UK, I think through Enlighten and through Cosmodent. All of these will work very well and give us an impression through which we can light cure, which is the key to this process. So once we've got our diagnostic wax up, we can then fill the tray, the clear tray full of clear impression material. We syringe that round the teeth and then we join the two of those together and allow that to set. You can see the tray has not been, uh, no adhesive has been placed on there so that once once we st we'll start the initial set we can then remove the tray and then just set through the PVS material. So in Elwin's case we decided that we could place these lower six anterior teeth in, in one fell swoop. Uh, one of the most common things that we get asked is how do you stop the teeth sticking together. There are numerous ways of doing this. One is to create a full arch wax up and make an impress of that and then to remove every other tooth and make a uh, impression of that then we first of all we place every other tooth and then come in with the final impression of that in elwin's case we decided to place the six lower anterior teeth all at once the teeth were etched and bonded and then the um impression tray with plus material was placed home with the warmed composite over the teeth and then light cured through the tray. Once we've got an initial cure, we then remove the acrylic tray and cure directly through the material. So just a few minutes later, we have the, the six restorations in exactly the place that we specified by our wax up. We can then take some diamond discs, um, polish soft legs polishing discs, a little serrated saws, make sure everything's clean, tidy, that everything is flossable, cleanable, and that it's gonna be there in good shape for a good length of time. It really doesn't take long to clean these up once you, if you are well planned. Uh, some other slight alternatives to the method, you can see here, Delwin had a nice diastema between his front teeth. So there we were able to put some PTFE teeth on the adjacent teeth, 
etch and bond the teeth and take that composite bit straight home for him. Then we put the PTFE tape on the laterals and the centrals and place the composite. Other ways, uh, you can also use this in other ways. And you can see here that what we did was we took some separating medium onto the model and we had to use the impression to fabricate an indirect restoration, which we're then able to clean, tidy and bond directly. And that might be more suitable for either you or your patient. A uh, slight diversion from where we are, but you can also use these wax ups and with uh, the digital options available to us today, we could scan the wax up, scan the preparation and use that as a biocopy to create nice crowns, which are also direct copies of our wax up. If we don't have uh, CEREC or, or materials like that, you can see here what we did was we remove all the amalgam. We placed a, um, we placed a dentine core into the tooth and then we used that clear matrix, uh, clear matrix of this tooth to take the enamel layer home. And you can see that once that's been cured in the way that I just described to you, actually end up with some pretty good anatomy on there, which would definitely take me some time to produce if I hadn't done it in this way. And we also end up with occlusal marks, which is what we've predicted on the wax up. So it really is rapid, precise, and can be very economic for both you and your patients. So a couple of hours later, we end up with a result with uh, Elwin's mouth restored. Uh, we now have an occlusal relationship, which we think is pretty good. We're pretty happy with the um, appearance of things. Elwin was very happy. Well, originally, we were going to go with an A2. Of course, he turned up on the day, changed his mind, wanted to go with an A1, which is why there's a slight shade shift. And now uh, we then said we do some post-operative bleaching, which he never quite got round to, being very happy with the result. And three years later, we still have had everything working very well and the patient has been very pleased with the result. So what I hope I've shared with you is a nice, simple way, or another way at least, of placing some of these composite restorations that uh, will give you a solution for some of your patients. Um, if, you've, uh, if you've got any questions, please do send them to info at bdseminars.com. Uh, if you leave comments on, on the YouTube video, we tend not to see those. So please, if you do have any questions, email us at info at bdseminars.com. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation. We've deliberately kept it uh, very short and concise. Um, and hopefully we'll speak again with you soon. Thanks for listening.